If you've ever attempted to survive on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, there's a good chance you've had to wait in line to do so. Ever since it was introduced in 2016, 2B2T's Q system has been a controversial part of the server's culture. What started out as a temporary solution to a problem became a lifeline to keep a decade-old server alive. Despite criticism throughout the years, it has become a necessary system but this digital waiting area has had a pretty bumpy history that you might not be aware of. So today, we'll discuss the controversial history of 2B2T's notorious Q system, why it was created, the criticism the system has faced throughout the years, some of the technical details behind it, and how it was recently pushed to its limits to become what it is today. Before we delve into this history, a big shout out to Raycon, for sponsoring today's video. Whether I'm running or lifting weights in the gym, Raycons are my go-to earbuds. The new everyday earbuds have an improved look and feel by using optimized gel tips. They're comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands, and it's no wonder they have over 48,000 five-star reviews. I found them to be very useful, so to get your own pair, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com fitmc to get up to 15% off your order. It's a great way to support the channel. Now then, let's get started. From its creation in 2010 to 2016, 2B2T operated like a typical Minecraft server. You would type in the IP, click Join Server, and you would log in instantly. The amount of players online at any given time rarely surpassed 60, even during its busiest times. Due to how large the map was, the server had an upkeep cost of around $90 per month and relied solely on player donations. It had never truly been pushed to its player limit, but on June 1st, 2016, that would change. A YouTuber named The Camping Rusher uploaded the first of many videos about 2B2T that ended up going viral. After seeing how fascinating and exciting the server was, thousands attempted to join 2B2T at the same time. Within less than an hour of the original upload, the server had hit maximum capacity, with many more trying to get in. The only way to successfully join was to spam the connect button and hope you were lucky enough to take the spot of someone leaving. To put it politely, it was awful. The 2B2T regulars that had played for years were frustrated. Their server was now flooded with new players and they had no way of joining the server through regular means. Realizing the problem he had just caused, Rusher got into contact with 2B2T's admin, Housemaster, and as a temporary solution, for the first time in the server's history, a primitive queue system was utilized. In order to progress through the line, you had to reconnect manually every 30 seconds. So if you were in vanilla, this meant hitting the button every 30 seconds for hours on end. For this reason, third-party clients with auto-reconnect were recommended. It was a very inefficient system, but it was better than nothing. This queue was a temporary measure until a more efficient system could be created. During brainstorming, Housemaster and Rusher identified three major problems that 2B2T faced. The temporary queue system was too tedious, the old community was unhappy, and the server required more expensive hardware to support the influx of new players. An idea for a new queue system was proposed that addressed all three of these issues at the same time. Instead of having just a single line, queue would be split into three separate ones, basic queue, veteran queue, and priority queue. Basic queue was the default. If you attempted to join the server, this is the line you would be placed in. Whenever a space opened up, it would pull someone from this line and your position would be automatically updated, so you wouldn't have to manually reconnect every 30 seconds. Being the default, this queue was the most populated and therefore the slowest. Next, you had veteran queue. In order to make the old player base happy, 
all accounts that joined 2B2T prior to June 1st were automatically put in front of the basic queue. It essentially allowed veterans to skip the line, which made the old community happy that they could play again without being shut out by new players. Finally, you had Priority Queue, the fastest of all three. Having Priority puts you in front of both the Basic Queue and Veteran Queue. The only catch was that access to this queue was $20 per month. It was considered a steep price, but the revenue generated by Priority would pay for server upkeep costs, since they would be much higher with more players joining. At the time, this seemed like the best solution to all three problems, so development on the system began. Before coming to 2B2T, the Camping Rusher was associated with a Minecraft server named The Archon, which is where he had made YouTube content for many years. The Archon would end up hosting this new queue system on their servers, and they would also handle payments regarding the priority system. In July of 2016, the new queue was fully implemented on 2B2T. Players were met with particle effects as they watched their place in line tick down automatically. This was actually just some clever camera work, as a player's view was locked inside a box covered in end portals. If you were paying for priority, or had access to veteran queue, you were probably very happy during this time period, as you would often skip ahead of a thousand people at the same time. But if you were stuck in the basic queue, you would often have to get in line 12 hours before you planned on actually playing. It was a huge time commitment. The queue system was working surprisingly well, but some members of the 2B2T community had some issues with it. Rusher himself was able to add or remove accounts from the different queues, and although this was only done on one notable occasion, it raised concerns that it gave him too much power on the server. Another issue was that the basic queue was getting even longer as 2B2T's popularity on YouTube continued to rise, and there was a higher demand for server entry. Despite the criticism from some players, the queue system worked, as intended, for over an entire year. But of course, the longer a system exists, the more likely it is that people will take advantage of it. Even before Rusher had joined 2B2T, there had been tens of thousands of Minecraft accounts that had joined the server at least once. All of these technically had access to the veteran queue, even if they had only logged in for several seconds. Instead of purchasing priority, new players attempted to buy Minecraft accounts from the old player base. Veteran accounts could be sold for as cheap as $15 or as expensive as $60, depending on the account's history. Paying a higher amount up front was seen as more cost effective than paying $20 a month for priority, so this organically created a black market for used Minecraft accounts. Eventually, Housemaster took notice of this practice. Money that would have gone to server upkeep was now going to account sellers that were technically breaking Minecraft's terms of service. At this point, less than 1% of the active player base were veterans, and many felt these players were receiving special treatment due to an arbitrary join date. And so, a hard choice had to be made. On December 4th, 2017, almost a year and a half after its implementation, Veteran Q was removed by Housemaster. Longtime players now had to either pay for priority or wait in the basic queue with everyone else. While newer players welcomed the removal, the old players felt betrayed by this change. A few months later, in April of 2018, the Archon, the server that had originally hosted the queue, was actually sold to new owners. It's speculated that Housemaster took full control of the queue system from Rusher's team around this time, but the exact details are unknown. Prior to the sale of the Archon, the queue received a visual overhaul. Instead of displaying end portals, players now looked into an empty void, but otherwise it functioned exactly the same. The following year, in 2019, it became more popular to create contraptions in-game that harmed the server in some way, such as crashing players, causing massive lag, and overall creating unplayable conditions. 
Housemaster implemented a new policy that sought to ban accounts from using the priority system if they were found to be harming the server. Despite cries from some of the griefers, this policy was met with mainly positive reception by the community. The queue system had been in place for over three years at this point, but no one could have expected what was about to happen. No matter how many fluctuations the queue had due to player interest and YouTube buzz, one thing had been true from the start. If you paid for priority, there was little to no wait to get into the server. The year 2020 changed that. With the world going into lockdown, everyone was spending more time indoors at their computers. In combination with 2B2T content being promoted heavily on YouTube, the queue absolutely skyrocketed. Basic queue was back in the thousands, and priority queue reached the highest levels it had ever seen. If you paid $20, you could still be waiting for up to two hours during peak activity, making some question if it was even worth it at that point. The queue system was constantly pushed to its limits during this time period. The demand for entry was so great that getting into the server casually had become a nightmare. Q remained at these higher numbers for the rest of 2020 and the first half of 2021. Eventually, due to a variety of factors, the Q managed to return to reasonable levels and once again, there was little to no wait when using priority. That brings us to present day. Since Housemaster is still attempting to bring the latest Minecraft update to the server, there's no telling what may happen to Q numbers should this endeavor be successful. While the Q has been a controversial part of 2B2T's history, it has become essential for its survival. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. So take it easy, FitFam, and stay alive out there.